up, Roto Grinders? NFL Pick six, 6 show week number 12, the Thanksgiving show. Um, this one works a little bit differently. We're going to go game by game with the Thanksgiving Day slate. Uh, typically, we do like the Sunday slate. We pick out three main games. We'll talk about that after the Thanksgiving slate. Maybe producer Steve can get us a timestamp that'll help people out uh, on the on the YouTube that are watching us on YouTube and they want to listen to the replay. So the you know if they want listen to this on a Friday night, they don't want to listen through all our, our Thanksgiving wow. nonsense. Is that is that something possible? I think so. I hope so. Hopefully, we can make that happen. Or you can just listen to this, hear how good or bad our takes were on Friday, and say, man, they really whiffed on that Josh Allen. <laughs> um, one way or the other, we'll see what our Josh Allen takes are. Uh, as as usual, we got uh, you know Rich Rebar, sharp football analysis. We got John Daigle, four for four bet spurts. Daigle, this is a you know this is a big day for you. You a lot lot of shows uh, the Thanksgiving week. Glad you squeeze us in. Uh, happy to uh, have you come on. We'll be talking movies later on in the show as well. Looking forward to that. You guys watch the movie. Uh, I guess we'll discuss that later. We will get a backload of that stuff, right? Is that what we're doing, yeah. John? Yeah, we, we put it on the back burner. That way we don't have to end on Lawrence Cager. We can talk about someone else at the very end of the show. So uh, we will be talking, you know, just a quick few minutes review on the cooler. And then Steve, producer Steve, won our contest because I was a donkey and late swapped off Tony Pollard. And so Steve won our contest. And so he'll pick the next movie for everyone. That'll give everyone a week to watch. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to hearing what you guys think about the cooler. I recommend it. Uh, I, I thought I was setting a precedent by being nice. I'm curious if you guys liked it. I hope you guys liked it. I mean, come on. It's a gambling movie. You guys have to have liked it. We'll see. Stay tuned. Uh, Rich, what's up? How are things in your world? It's good. We've, we're, we're packing a lot into these three days uh, of football, man. It feel, today felt like a Friday. Like, with, like, NFL news, it felt like Friday news. You know, like, uh, Daryl Henderson signing, like, good quarterback changes. It, it felt weird, man. It still doesn't feel like Wednesday night. Mike White is somebody we might mention at some point throughout the show. Uh, Sam Darnold is throwing footballs uh, this week. I tell you what, uh, Bryce Perkins not being on this Thanksgiving slate is legitimately breaking my heart. <laughs> Do you want to? I mean, I, I'm looking forward to a Bryce Perkins take because. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean. That uh, that Sunday slate is wild. Uh, we went We went two, three weeks without any values. And now you could pay down. You can make whatever the hell you want this Sunday. I think DK heard my whining and probably a lot of people whining about how tight the cap was. And like, all right, shut up. We're going to loosen it up a little bit. The interesting thing is like the biggest total on the board for the main slate. And again, we'll talk about the main slate after Thanksgiving, 48 and a half, the biggest total on the board. It's, you know, and there's some real stinkers, Denver and Carolina. 2022 NFL football, man. But the NFL is, uh, have you seen they've transitioned to selling the NFL this year as the games are close? <laughs> we don't care if they're good. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like when someone tells you, hey, man, uh, this movie's not good, but you like the ending. <laughs> this is what I was going to bring up to you, Dean, is that uh, I'm at a good friend's house, Chris G., who uh, is a big best ball player on Underdog in particular, maxed out the BBM, has been on ship chasing before, yada, yada. But he watches Red Zone. Thus, I watch yes! Red Zone. I watch Red Zone this week. And let me tell you something, Dean. Uh, there were more sacks on red zone than touchdowns. I can I can go back and count them. Nothing happened on red zone whatsoever in my lone experience. So never again. Never you're ever just, again. You're just thinking about the, the the rare time they jumped over to New England and the Jets. That was all. Uh, that was all sacks and interceptions and no touchdowns. And uh, they had to squeeze that game in. And did anybody else go on the rant about why the Jets like did not punt the ball out of bounds? We, I mean, has that conversation been had? on a Wednesday night already because I have heard nobody complain about this. Like just kick the ball out of bounds. Is it so hard to kick the ball 37 yards and out and then we go to overtime? To be fair, nobody wanted any more of that game to happen. That is a good point. (laughs) They put us out of our misery. The ref was going to throw that flag on that, that, but maybe if he blocked in the back, he's like, oh, no, no, No. no, I'm out of here. There's no way. It took overtime for the Raiders to score 22 points. Like, let's get out of here. Just everyone shut down everything. Let's be done with the day. I thought that game for sure was going to end in a tie because, like, the Raiders, none of those teams, was it Raiders and Denver? None yeah. of those teams deserve to win any more football games the rest of uh, the season. We'll I'll tell you what, uh, Sunday, not, not like we said, we're a forward thinking show. I thought I was going to be like the richest person in the world at like 4 p.m. <laughs> you know, Josh Allen had, had tanked and I didn't really have him. I was like, oh my goodness, I got so much of this Cowboys Vikings game. I got so much T. Higgins and Joe Mixon. Like, this is going to be amazing. And uh, no. Oh. 
I had uh I had Jalen Hurts doubles <laughs> with Tony Pollard and Cowboys defense on DraftKings. So I did very I had my best week of the year on DraftKings, but FanDuel. I don't know. I explained in a video on the 444 YouTube. I swapped off to Dalvin Cook. I don't I, I genuinely I don't think I questioned myself what I was doing. I didn't didn't comprehend that Tony Pollard would be 3% rostered especially on FanDuel where you have to pay up for him. So it was the better spot for leverage and I got off of him for some reason. So didn't do well on FanDuel. My fault. My fault totally. That's a good segue by the way. Well, we're not talking about that game first, but Tony Pollard on FanDuel on a three-game Thanksgiving slate. They're doing it right. He's not going to be played. I mean, whatever. It's hard to hide in a three-gamer. But, like, no optimal is giving you Tony Pollard. DK, different conversation. Very first game on this slate, as always, Detroit. They host uh, the game on Thanksgiving. 54.5 is the total. That's a big boy number. Buffalo, 32 is their team total. That's a huge number as well. Back in the Dome, Detroit flying back and forth and back and forth. And they're back in Detroit. They're 10-point favorites here. Uh, Rich, I will start with you. Um you know, if you want to go with the uh, Buffalo, by all means, go for it or talk about Detroit. As is always, we always seem to talk about Detroit. Yeah, they always find their way to the show. But I mean, to me, this is interesting from like a, a, a game stance because obviously the Bills are like the the prime team of the slate, right? Remember last year they were the hammer. They played it. They played the late game against the Saints. Mm-hmm. Now they play the early game, so we're gonna get a, like a huge card revealed right away whether like you know what Josh Allen did in that game, if you do not play Josh Allen or if you did play Josh Allen, if he dropped the like 35-point hammer. Because you look at this quarterback slate, there aren't a lot of guys that can get to where Josh Josh Allen's ceiling goes. Uh, And then you also know too like all your leverage plays, right? Like did you play, uh, you know, your one-offs? Did you play a Cleef Raymond? Did he score a touchdown? Uh, I doubt you played any lines tight ends. Like say like DeAndre Swift, right? Like DeAndre Swift might be your wild card. Did he hit? Because typically, like, I want to play my low percentage guys early so I get that card turned over. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so we're going to have a bunch of things. The chalk's going to be revealed because the most popular plays are going to be Diggs and Allen, uh, and we're going to get those kind of turned over. And then some of the reveals of, like, the leverage plays, like Dawson Knox, uh, DeAndre Swift, guys like no, James Cook, I think is going to get steamed a little bit and be popular just for the salary. But uh, we're going to get those things revealed early on because remember, you want to keep swapping all day on this slate. If you want to swap after the first game, you want to swap after the second game because you want to always be calibrating on the slate. I want you- I want to be done or swap. That's it. And Josh <laughs> Allen, Josh Allen allows me being underweight on him allows me to be done or swap. And so that's the way I lean strictly for strategy purposes. I'm taking a nap. Dean on Thursday, or we're staying up with alcohol and saying, okay, this slate is mine now. That's the way I'm handling it. Just elaborate on that for a second, Rich, because you don't want really to talk about this very often, but that's how what's so, so different. Three uh, island games back to back to back. Um, and like you talk about, if your wild card swift hits and how you adjust accordingly, and like it may seem obvious to us, but some people may not understand. Like if you if if you have swift. Who's going to be under owned to some degree because you know he's just not playing a ton. If he somehow finds, yeah, I just used him as a hypothetical. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good person to use because he's probably not going to be heavily owned. And then you shouldn't have like things too far off the reservation after that, right? Uh, if he hits now, just mm-hmm. have, the, never, have everybody come play catch up and catch your swift, and you have the rest of, and you have chalk the rest of the way. Feel free mm-hmm. to elaborate. Because you're well, you know, you you basically laid it out because you're already unique, right? Like, so you can play more popular plays uh, because you've already gained on the field by playing an underowned player that that popped. So that's really just really all it is. And then inversely, like you know, if you you know what you, if if like DeAndre Swift busts, then I might need to take another swing at, uh, somewhere else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a Giants play. receiver or something. <laughs> right. You know, I might be able to play like Isaiah Hodgins or uh, someone else <laughs> and hopefully run into some stuff and get creative that way. But, yeah, that's basically it. As, uh, you want to kind of you, – you know, if you have like – like you, if you're wild card guys like Nelson Aguilar and you go into 830, like needing that to happen, like you're, you're against the wall, right? Like he has to hit where you can't adjust your lineup after that. So that's really kind of what it is. You don't want to play some of these one-off guys. And it's the most uh, highest game total of the of the day is the first game. So you can take kind of some of your swings, like I said, on like the the Raymonds, a DJ Shark, or DeAndre's, a lot of the Lions outside of Amon Ross A. Brown. Uh, and, <laughs> and as Reeves mentioned earlier, he said, 
a Josh Allen was the hammer, and that's true, but Josh Allen on slots were the hammer because you could late swap. Zach Moss was healthy scratch, remember, for that night game. Yeah, and so yeah, Matt, Matt, Breida, Matt Breida with Josh Allen as the receiving back was the play. Um, I won a couple tournaments last year with that and Deshaun Jackson, as we nice. talked about in the Thursday slate, because of waiting for that late swap. So yeah, that's Dawson the way I've kind of come so into this close. game as well. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Devontae Parker's questionable here. Uh, we have a couple of Giants players that are questionable. So it's almost just beneficial to suck it up and lose or late swap this thing to the very death. Um, 32 team total on Buffalo, much like different than everybody else here, John. I, and, you know, I, I thought about this one back and forth and how NFL players, you know, they they have their routine. Uh, the Bills had their routine completely thrown off last week yep. where they were on the tarmac waiting to go to Detroit to play the, the neutral site game versus Cleveland. They decided to come back after that game for a couple of days. Now, now they're going back to Detroit to actually play the Lions, you know, playing on Thursdays, goofy, all these, uh, all these air miles is goofy. Uh, Josh Allen has this elbow and he, he's made some questionable throws by his standards. Uh, is that a small sample thing? Are we worried about that? I mean, of course you're still going to play Josh Allen, but like maybe it's a, it's bothering him to some degree. We're not privy to the medicals, but, it's just interesting and noteworthy on a three gamer. Uh, and I feel like it's like, it's one of those things like you don't know. I, I assume it's not ideal to be flying back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but also Buffalo's in a dome and they're facing the Detroit lions. So, I mean, you could probably wake these players up at like four o'clock in the morning and say, all right, get, uh, you know, Josh, go get digs and we're playing against the lions. Let's go. And they're good to go. I mean, it's like a 40 minute flight, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, and, and, you know, and I'm sure they have like they have leg room. It's not like Southwest they're flying on <laughs> Frontier. They're not on the Spirit, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a little bit. I, I don't. Maybe I'm making too much of it, and I'm just trying to think of a way. And again, I'm still going to play plenty of bills. But yeah, um, what, what is what? What should we say? Because well, you're talking about it, John. It sounds like you don't want to play uh, Allen. He's 40 percent proje- projected own on Fanduel. This is at a six quarterbacks, obviously 42 percent projected own on DK. Um, going to be the most popular quarterback, no surprise. How are you handling Allen and just this game in general? Even on a short slate, I just can't suck up a 40% rostered quarterback. Uh, not only the highest rostered quarterback, definitely in this slate, I think he's going to be the highest rostered player at quarterback. And no one can tell me he's not going to fail because we now have him outside the top 10 quarterbacks in two of his last four games. The other two games, of course, he did reach his ceiling, the top three quarterback. So just recently as last week, he was the QB 18 overall. So again, you can't tell me he's not going to fail. Of course, there's a position where he fails. The the metrics, the matchup, of course, it sets up well. But then also we have this little thing we're watching out for where last week in the first half, he completed 56% of his passes. And then the Bills came out of halftime. We're leading only 13 to 10. And they schemed 19 running back carries to 12 dropbacks across their last two quarters. Uh, maybe that was because of Josh Allen's injury. Maybe that's because to take it out of his hand, since he has made a lot of poor decisions these last three games, uh, four interceptions, three fumbles in that time as well, a couple overthrows in the first half against the Browns. So so like you, I, I'm trying to paint the narrative and generally it just comes down to strategy for me. And I just don't want to play, like we talked about last week, how I said we can't play 30% CD Lamb. There's just no way. Um, I don't think I can play 40% Josh Allen. There's just no way. I mean, I'm going to play some 40% Josh Allen. R- it's Richie, okay. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm like, I'm not going to be 100%, obviously. I'm I hurt when I say it. If you can't tell, Dean, I'm just like, <laughs> no, I'm I get ready. It. I'm ready for the worst. I know. But you're right. Like, if, if it somehow works in your favor, you're so far ahead. Um, you know, are, are you? I mean, this ain't this ain't Devin Singletary from last year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, especially because we we talk about he's at a position with only five other players on the slate. So, and and we're gonna walk through this. And again, we led the show off by saying, like, listen, the NFL's been bad this year, and these other games could be bad. There's a lot of elements like where these other two games could end up being really bad. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's maybe like Dak can get with the ceiling. You need more of a floor performance. But the way if you're gonna play Josh Allen at forty percent. Is just just get unique with it, right? Like if you're just going in and you're going to make a bunch of lineups with Josh Allen and just run it back with Stephon Diggs, like that ain't going to work. There's going to be a lot of people doing that. So you're going to have to get more unique, whether you run doubles, uh, who you bring it back with. You're just going to get more unique with your, uh, you know, your construction around Josh Allen uh, and and look to go that. Like you're just not going to pop Josh Allen and optimal or just run back his most popular receiver. What path are you most likely to take with Allen? Are you most likely to roster him and, 
if you are, you know, going to make him plan with yeah. the running back with Amon Ra, whatever, how do you adjust your line? Is there somebody else on another team that you're identifying or you're not doing that because that's too chalky. You're going to play Gabe Davis and his high variance and hopefully he gets like a 60, a 60 yard pass uh, touchdown. That's something you can do as well. Um, have you settled on that or you're still kind of figuring it out? No, no, I mean, kind of on you guys, uh, but uh, to walk me through, I'm going to make all my lineups tonight. I haven't uh, made any yet. I just, I did Sweet. a show with Holka earlier and uh, we just did like kind of like the DraftKings angle, the DraftKings pricing, and it looks a lot looser than FanDuel uh, this week. It looks a lot more easier to, to, to get creative over there than it necessarily is on FanDuel. So I need you guys to help me because uh, I, like I said, I play more uh, over on FanDuel. So I need you guys to help me get creative and make some Josh Allen lineups. But uh, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, Detroit offers so many ways for him to get there. One, they're just like a really bad pass defense like in general. And their their best pass defender is out, out for this game, Jeffrey Okuda. Uh, the 29th in passing points allowed per game to opposing quarterbacks. They're dead last in yards per pass attempt. They're dead last in yards per completion on the quarterbacks. Uh, then the rushing element, right? Like we talked about this with, with Daniel Jones. We were on Daniel Jones last week. I mean, look at the rushing lines they've given up to quarterbacks. You know, Jalen Hurts, 90 and a touchdown. Carson Wentz had 23 rushing yards. Geno, 49 and a touchdown. Aaron Rodgers, 40 yards. Justin Fields, 147 and two. Daniel Jones, 50 and a touchdown last week. There's just a lot of ways for Josh Allen to get there. I mean, there's a way Josh Allen can get there and naked Josh Allen works. You know, yeah. he's that kind of player. Uh, so it is a very creative kind of uh, layout here to try to figure out what you want to do because it's the most popular player like Vegas. he's going to be the most rostered player in all large field tournaments there's just no way around it uh absolutely so you just got to get a little more creative and uh, what you're going to build around him it would be interesting to see if like uh you know he does get there without any of the other guys like he has a couple rushing touchdowns maybe we pepper in like an oddball rushing touch or like two weeks ago isaiah mckenzie had a rushing touchdown mm -hmm. uh maybe you get some weird stuff like that uh yeah, it, it is interesting because the Lions defense is that bad. I mean, games in Detroit are averaging 62 combined points per game. It's the highest in the NFL. They are – the Lions themselves are punching back. I mean, everyone's talked about their home road. So it's, to me, like they've had enough good road games now where we can just say like when they're healthy, they're capable of scoring. It's fine. And this Bills defense has had so many injuries now to this point. We've seen they've gotten leaky. Like they've, they're giving up production. They've been giving up wide receiver production for like five weeks straight now. Uh, where they're allowing multiple receivers, receivers to get there because they force you to throw inherently because they press the scoreboard and they're still pretty good against the run. But this this back end of the defense had so much turnover and they started so many different cornerbacks and safeties this year that they are giving up passing production. Uh, so you know if you if you want to get cute and you want to build inversely, like man, what if you just take what if Jared Goff's your flyer, right? Like he's your wild card and Jared Goff teams got the hard start because. They've allowed 300 passing yards to guys like Jacoby Brissett and Kenny Pickett. They've allowed over 300 passing yards in four of their past six games. There's a there's a, a, a lot of ways to get here early. This is the game, though. And and if you play like the Lions passing game, it's great because you know then you don't play Jamal Williams or vice versa. Like uh, Jamal Williams, as we know, six <laughs> touchdowns in his last four games. He's averaging 17 and a half touches in that span. But also Jamal Williams hasn't been targeted in three consecutive games. So you're never correlating Jamal Williams with Jared Goff or the team's passing game. So you can still stack the bills and then say, okay, they score via Jamal Williams or score via the passing game because it's never, they never intertwine like that. I just thought, I thought it was interesting. I ran, I just ran some optimals on FanDuel specifically, Rich. And, um, you know, I didn't put any correlation rules in there that, that, to be clear, which is of note mm -hmm. because no correlation rules. Uh, the, the Buffalo receivers, Isaiah McKenzie, who put up a big old zero last week, but he's cheap. 18% of optimals digs 13% yeah. of optimals Davis 1%. So it's just interesting that, you know, uh, obviously Allen's going to be crazy popular, but, Math wise, at least according, you know, obviously you're going to put rules in. Most people are going to play. They're going to pair somebody with Allen. It's just right. a note that the receivers are not popping individually. Well, uh, Diggs is really expensive. So Allen yeah. plus Diggs is a lot. I mean, I think what we're seeing the most common build I think we'll see is people kind of punting RB2 on both sites. Because, uh, you know, it's not a great running back slate. Like when you look at this, like running back slate, we've got guys that, are good like Pollard's been hot 
Dalvin Cook, we know can get there. Saquon can get there, but they're expensive, and none of them have like ultra high like ceilings. Unless you really believe Pollard's going to have 100 receiving yards again, and, and, and the two longest receiving touchdowns for a running back <laughs> of the season. Uh, but you even Saquon, you look at you pull up his like game log and like look at like his his final point scores. Like he's he's getting there like in the high teens, low 20s. Like for a player that's that expensive on on both sites, like he's not going to bury you if he gets there. Right. But like Allen has the potential to bury you. Like if he has 35, like, because if none of these quarterbacks can sniff 20, which, you know, definitely some of these guys still can, but if that does happen, then like you're kind of just SOL because that's when the, the meta of DFS this whole year, whether you're playing short slate or base, like these quarterbacks, I've been the difference makers, like, you know, in, in lineup construction, like paying down a quarterback has not worked like this year really at all. Uh, Jeff Kings gave us a couple free weeks of Justin Fields there, but everyone played him. John, I'm curious it's, if you're not playing Allen, uh, what pieces are you playing on Buffalo? Are you being, are you going to play Singletary? He was going to be popular uh, to, to Rich's point. I think he's going to get a ton of ownership on Fandle just because of salary reasons. Uh, 25% projected. Own. Okay. We have Stevenson as the highest guy for what it's worth uh, on Fandle at 42%. Barkley 35, Cook 28, Pollard 25, Singletary at 24, but, uh, John, I assume you're playing some pieces in this Buffalo offense, even if you're not necessarily attaching them to Josh Allen. Yeah, they have a 32-point team total, which is five more points higher than the Cowboys, the second <laughs> highest on the slate. So whether I believe it or not, and and I can't I can't paint ways this game goes under and the Lions cover, but at the same time, like we're not fading in a three-game slate, the Bills all together. So I would basically just try to soak up the rushing touchdowns with Devin Singletary who, especially on DraftKings, just continues to be overlooked 5,700 in this slate uh, against the Lions, where if they want to take with a lead the pressure off Josh Allen, just like they did the Browns last week, they can certainly do so. So, yeah, I would lean Singletary for sure. Um, It's just interesting, too, though, because you can, like, one-off Gabe Davis as well. Uh, You know, Gabe Davis has been over 16 fantasy points in four games. He's been under eight in another four games. So he's boomer bust, but boomer bust is perfect for this slate. Uh, so I don't mind squeezing him in. He's only 5,300 on DraftKings as well compared to 7,200 on FanDuel. And then for uh, the Lions, uh, nope, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead, Dean. Just no on the, okay. Just no on the Lions. I was thinking like the, the richest point, he was talking about playing Goff and, you know, a huge salary saver. Like yeah. play Goff with Amon Ra and run it back with Diggs if you want to run it back with Diggs. Diggs and Singletary if you want to do that. Yeah, you can play a lot of those guys. I mean, you can you can also do what Daigle said is you can also play golf either without Swift or with Swift, right? Because Swift is a like your one off, and you can play him in the passing game correlation where there's no passing game correlation with Jamal Williams. You can just fade that the Lions have no rushing touchdowns, and if they do have one that's not from Jamal Williams, it's probably from Swift who has. He scored in five of the seven games that he's played. I mean, the dude like we have no idea where his touches are going to go. We know they're not going to go high. But, you know, if you get a couple touchdowns on this slate, like, it, it could be a difference maker. Uh, and, you know, you can play them with golf and save a lot of money. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely going to – I'm going to play. I'm going to have lineups with every quarterback. But yeah. So, like, you know, that, that's the way I think I want to play it is with golf. And then getting some of the Bills' expensive pieces, obviously you're going to run the Sun God or, you know, maybe a guy like Raymond and then maybe Swift and – you play against Jamal Williams because, listen, Jamal Williams, I'm ready for him. to. He's been burying me all year. Might as well make it – let him bury me on the holidays too because he's just an archetype of player that I don't really ever want to play when he's going to be popular or even have mild ownership. Uh, and you've got many Jamal Williams on the slate as well and Ezekiel Elliott. Um, as we talked about last week too, after the bye, the Bills had allowed over six yards per carry. They were getting burnt on the ground as well. They have the same – players Greg Rousseau list goes on of injuries that would allow them to maybe leak some production in the running game uh they did stuff Nick Chubb last week for 14 19 yards on 14 carries but maybe that was just an anomaly compared to what they did the three games prior also I remember well, what I was gonna big say runs. uh that's the thing with that their, so their yeah. run B is actually still really good and they're 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 getting they're number one in the NFL in yards allowed before contact the fewest yards before contact but they've had a few runs where they just don't tackle and guys get out for huge gains. And that didn't happen with Chubb last week. And you look at a guy like Jamal Williams among 32 running backs, 100 carries, he's 26 in yards after contact. So like to me, like if they're, if they do give up a big run, it's probably going to be either Swift or Justin Jackson, who's still playing a little bit too. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, what, 
I was going to say is what I also like about the slate is that they made Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen so expensive and rightfully so that you know those lineups won't have Saquon Barkley. So honestly, like if Allen and Diggs fail, those stacks, which are going to be everywhere, uh, even 20, 21 points from Barkley is probably good enough to win the slate because you know those teams aren't spending up for Barkley. And so that's why I find... Well, the Giants game, we're going to talk a lot about it, but like, I almost just want to suck it up and play Barkley just to be unique elsewhere. Well, a couple things. Uh, Rich, you said that you're playing every quarterback. I mean, every quarterback in this game or every quarterback in the slate? You're getting some slate. Oh, I'm Both. in a stack. I'm in Both. a stack. How many lineups are yeah. you making that Mac Jones makes one? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I, I, I like Mac Jones over Jared Goff. We're not there yet, but uh, okay. I'm, getting re- I'm getting ready to suck it up with Mac Jones on Thanksgiving. Oh, baby. Okay. All right. I'm 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 looking forward to this. <laughs> Mac Jones, who hasn't thrown more than one touchdown in the game. Here I am to sell it to you. Oh, yeah. I mean, D. Imagine not having a player in this slate. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. Not not gonna be me. Mac well, Jones. Worst 50, 100. Is like, yeah, somebody scores a touchdown that you don't have. Like the first. Like if you don't have any uh, uh, Raymond, for whatever. Jesper Horstead. Remember when Jesper Horstead oh, scored that oh, touchdown? Yeah. It's just like this. Uh, Thanksgiving's ruined. That's it. Like I'm done. Mm-hmm. I, I can't come that's, back. To this. J- Jesper Horstead, that's an analogy for Lawrence Cager. Like, that's where we're at right now, this slate. <laughs> Swift, they've been babying so much, and it's a short week for him. Like, is there concern that he gets even less uh, rich here as far I as? I think some of the other guys you might be more concerned about. He's not, he, like, because he's probably not going to max out on touches, anyways. Like, he can't get less. He can't have his workload reduced. Like, sure? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like there's nowhere for it to go really like he just have okay. to be inactive uh but some other guys like i think like like right away like the one guy that pops to me we're not at that game that like i could see getting a lot less carries than people think is ramondre for sure like i could definitely see that be more of a rushing yeah. split this week uh, on the short week and he did he's been running well anyways where we see more of a rushing split there too but then there's still a way to play that because you have the receiving angle but yeah, I, to me, the Swift is one of the guys that stands out because in my head, and I could be galaxy braining this, but like I feel like people are looking at this slate from a top-down stance and just the receiver plays are a lot better than the running back plays. And there's a way that like if you have multiple receivers that get there with big crooked numbers, it's going to be hard to make up. So I think if anyone pays up for a running back, they're not going to pay up for two probably. So maybe there's a way you get unique as you pay up for kind of two of these running backs. But a lot of people are going to be giving away that running back two spot. So – I mean, I would much rather play DeAndre Swift than a guy like James Cook, right? Who's probably going to have a similar touch count as like a floor, probably not going to catch any passes, like really any, uh, has to score a touchdown. Like, and he might be as popular, right? Like in terms of of ownership, because he's a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Um, Cook will probably be a mop-up guy, I presume, if this game gets out of hands. You're talking maybe what, like a 5% difference in ownership between... James Cook and DeAndre Swift. Uh, I mean, the price is obviously going to be different, but um, yeah, let, let's well, let me say those. Pull it up right now. I mean, th- those eleven touches definitely impact Cook's ownership for sure. He kind of got it at the perfect time for a short oh, yeah. slate for us to like be off of it. Why well, stack the Cooks? How about that for a narrative? Oh, right? there you go. Uh, James Cook, we have him. This is DK for what it's worth. Four point four K on DK. We have ten point five percent ownership. And you're asking about Swift 12. And that's way too much. You're talking about a guy. Way too much. Yeah, te- a double-digit ownership for a guy who might, like, who's going to probably top out at, like, 30% of the backfield share. Devin, Devin Singletary play? still had 20 touches last week. We have Cook, uh, Cook well ahead of Brita for what it's worth. Brita 4-3, Cook 4-4. I also had a theory about that. Like, you talked about, you know, the short week. I think the Giants pulled Barkley off early last week, like because they were chasing and they were down by like, maybe two and a half scores, you know, two, and a half, two plus touchdowns. They got murdered. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was all Brita at the end, I believe, and I feel like he scored that, a touchdown too. If he wasn't playing Thursday, maybe they would have let Barkley go at least like another series. Um, maybe they're anticipating the Thursday slate. I don't know, but just the uh, if, if you like a do you prefer, narrative, yeah, just a thought. Like I don't know, it just that makes sense to me in my head, but. I have no, I have no, clue it's just, not. you know, we're about to get to that game, but uh, gosh, I, I just want to, I feel like I want to be overweight on Barkley for actually not a good reason. Like <laughs> it's just, just, just for tournament reasons, because I know everyone's going to pe- play Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. And I, trust me, I've tried it. I know you can't afford Saquon Barkley when you do that. So it's like, okay, well maybe I just play Saquon Barkley to be different. That's where I'm at right now. 
My, yeah. my, my problem, and we're not there at that game, though. But my issue with Barkley is at 8-8 eight, eight and 8K, like, he hasn't had the ceiling for that type of salary where I'm scared if he, if he gets there. Like, Trust he just me. doesn't scare me. Also, the uh, offensive <laughs> line is all beat up, and Dallas is yeah. small. Oh, everybody. like – they're um, they're on they're on seven eleven workers like they're yeah. on nobodies right now on that line. Yeah, I, that, that's that's kind of my issue with that. And that doesn't mean he can't get loose, but I I mean again, this is the I feel like I know what's going to happen <laughs> take, which is well, you know, not always the right way to go. But no yeah. no Christian Darisol like and Dalvin Cook still averaged six and a half yards per carry. They just they just got blown the hell out, so they couldn't run the ball more. But like the the Cowboys defense is still very susceptible on the ground again. This is not me trying to sell you a bad play. I'm just telling you what I'm probably going to do just to suck it up and take a nap. Like, cause I, I think that's the best strategy here for Saquon Barkley. Rich, are you making enough lineups? Uh, you're getting all the quarterbacks. Are you getting all the tight ends like Brock? Wright? No, 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 no. I'm uh, not going to max it. No, no, no. I, I was, you know, tongue in cheek saying on every play, but, like, <laughs> uh, but the, I will build a stack for every quarterback though, for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, cause it's like I said, it's covering six. And I'll get a couple more. I'll, there'll be some more unique lineups in there too. But yeah, I mean, I usually typically, on a site like this, I make around 30 different lineups and then I'll play those. So we'll get in the lab. You don't do by hand, not, not 30. You can't make no, 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 no. I'll figure out like, no, because I want to take people out of the player pool and like I'm not doing that all by hand. You know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to get who are you down. kicking out of the player pool. What's that? Like who are you kicking out? Is there significant players you're kicking out or like Justin Jackson you're kicking out? I mean, maybe like Jamal, I'm probably going to play zero Jamal Williams. Okay, that's what I want. I wanted like a take like that. I mean, yeah. we're not I'm gonna probably gonna play and, and just let it be. Like yeah. I'm just gonna let it be. I'm gonna probably play zero Jamal Williams. Like honestly, like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna fade the hell out of him, and hopefully that he doesn't have double digit touchdowns. So he's had in five games this year. He's got a <laughs> um, nose for the end zone, right? I mean, this dude. I mean, he just keeps getting. He, he's not doing anything else. Forty seven percent of his fantasy points are touchdowns. Uh, that's amazing. But, the the most the highest rate in the league Zeke is second that's why I call him baby Jamal Williams now because like he doesn't catch any passes and just falls to the end zone that's like basically where you are who's the inverse uh, of that I'm sure I'm curious you probably know who's the inverse who's the one that has their least amount of their fantasy points on touchdowns uh running back I'd, I'd have to double check like wide receiver I always keep an eye on it. it's guys like like Michael Pittman Chris Godwin Tyree because those are the regression guys right like you're looking like these are going to start to turn some touchdowns. Except uh, Deontay Johnson isn't going to regress no matter how much people want it to happen. Yeah, no, he's not. He's not. <laughs> it's not happening yeah. for him. I feel like but, it was Tyreek uh, for a while before he scored like a, several touchdowns. But I think this is an interesting thing because like Daigle said, like I think Gabe David, well, you said Gabe David wasn't popping in optimals, but I'm curious to see what his projected ownership is because he's like, you'd think people would gravitate to him on like a slate like this because obviously small slate, if he has the 30 burger, you're right off, you're, you're, you're out the gates um but Gabe this Davis? is yeah yeah because from a matchup stance like this is big he is like really night and day splits versus man and zone coverage and you know the lions obviously they, they play the most man coverage uh in the league uh but he against zone coverage he's averaging 2.1 yards per route run 0.86 yards per route run against man coverage i mean you know if you follow matt Harmon's work it's been kind of like the bugaboo against gabe davis like he doesn't really get open uh, you know, so I'm curious to see because it's like a, typically when you look at it from a matchup stance, this would be like a spot to like it's screaming to, to get digs in because he just eviscerates man coverage and Akuda's not playing. Um, uh, I, I doubt that the Lions are going to really change their stripes, right? Like they're probably not going to like just drop back and play a bunch of shell coverage, like they really can't, they'll get destroyed still either way. So they might just choose the lesser of two evils. And, and Davis's defense, he previously did not have a high target share, but was still adding splash plays but now we have like these last since yeah. the buy since he's been healthy from the ankle sprain he has had a 20 percent target share at least seven targets in three or four games since the buy so like he's actually getting a little bit of volume now too but maybe the defense splits do matter a lot so he's gonna be more popular gabe davis that is on dk uh he's so cheap yeah, yeah it's disgusting three. it's probably a good fade uh on dk because like we know the floor can be rough um 33 yeah. percent currently projected owned on dk Fandle, distinctly different price over there. He's at seven ish on Fandle. Seven and we, ha- we have uh, we have 28%, which seems a little high. These numbers are refined the closer we get to lock in the morning. I'm sure they'll change a little bit, but it's going to be higher on DK for what it's worth. Before we move on, give me, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. both of you guys, give, give me your favorite, uh, well, John, your favorite like GPP play in this game and your favorite fade in this game. I guess you already said it's Josh Allen. I don't want to pin you on that, but that's 
you know, you suggest, and you, yeah, you, no, I'll just pay me with it. I don't, I don't care. Like I've, I've done this so long. I don't, I don't care about like, I know what everyone else is going to do. I know what I need to do to win the slate or just call it a day. I'm fading. Jo- I'm going to be underweight on Josh Allen. It's going to suck. Please burn my mentions <laughs> to the ground. I don't care. I'm going to be on my second plate of dressing by that time, but I will be watching closely because I'm ready to let, late swap. Um, What's I'll have you can't do see- worse than David Johnson. So you're all right. David Johnson had 10 touches in the first quarter. Calm down. He was doing well. I still remember that vividly. Uh, I'll go Devin Singletary over Josh Allen as my leverage. And gosh, am I even playing a Lions player? I don't even know if I'm playing a Lions player. Don't come to me this game. What? I'm just, not playing this game. Dressing? You said second play to dressing. Just straight. Is that a Texas thing? What is straight? Is dressing a food? Is that stuffing? Like a That's stuffing. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Dressing stuffing. is stuffing? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You, you never heard. You never heard. heard that. I know. Uh, one thing I've never. I know dressing okay. is like Thousand Island. <laughs> no, no. My, my apologies. That that's actually a, yes. It confuses people when I say that. Also, I still call. Um, I don't have it near me, but I have the the skull caps. I call toboggans, but toboggan is a sled in Canada. In <laughs> in the north, I believe they are called skull caps or knit hats. Um, but in the south, they're called toboggans. So I wear a lot of toboggans as well. There you go. Um, we, we teach you all sorts of things on this yeah. show. Here. This is why educational you show for children. <laughs> Ritz, do you have uh, your favorite tournament play? Maybe your favorite fade in this game? I guess you kind of already said Jamal Williams would be your favorite fade in this game. Yeah, yeah I, I don't mind. I mean, I'm trying to talk myself at least into the Lions side getting there because I like the idea of playing the, the Lions pass catchers and with like digs. You know, if I can do like golf, Swift, Amon Ra, bring it back with digs. Uh, you can even bring it back like with with Davis if you want, you know, or maybe both. You know, you just play all three receivers in this game and you're you're still in a good spot because if just golf can get, you know, uh 60% of what Allen gets, like which is definitely still not in the probable range of outcomes. But if you do this week, you're all right, man. You're all right. We're about the 35, 40 minutes in, one game down. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> But guys like Raymond Shark, like those are the guys. Like you want to throw those oneers, man, because like we're projecting a passing script for the Lions, right? What did Shark get, by the way? Last did, did he play? He didn't. No, nah, he was like he played like two yards. snaps a quarter. But uh, yeah. they already said that he's not going to be as restricted this week, which could mean anything. That which whatever. It's Detroit. Uh, like what? What does that mean? Like did they? Did, yeah. Is Swift restricted or not restricted? What do they call him? Exactly. Like I mean, no one knows. Swift is practicing full two weeks in a row now. So <laughs> who, who knows? But yeah. like those guys are going to be on the field largely. Like well, Raymond will be. Like at least you know, like Raymond's getting exercise. Like he hasn't had any turkey yet. He's out there running. You just hope something happens. This I cannot believe this game is the first one of the slate. Just save it till the end. That way we can all figure out what to do. The first game to ruin my morning at eleven. Like God. Man. But all the co- like these are the major cards though. They're gonna be. That's why I said I kind of like it. It's first because like if James yeah, Cook, because like James Cook, I'll tell you what, I ain't playing double digit James Cook. I know that. <laughs> so like if James Cook gets there, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be chasing man. You're gonna and, be putting on some goofy stuff. And as you mentioned, <laughs> if you play Jared Goff, like it's still a Monroe St. Brown. He's still he's still accounted for thirty five point eight percent of this team's targets, like without T.J. Hawkins in the past three games. Like Jared Goff goes one place, and like that's what's annoying about these short slates is that DeAndre Swift may be like genuinely two targets is enough for DeAndre Swift to maybe get there. He did score his touchdown last week inside the five yard line in garbage time, which is also like a sign that the Lions were blowing Giants out because they gave Swift a touch inside the five yard line over Jamal Williams. But yeah, like it's enough on a short slate. Giants, Cowboys, 45 and a half is a total. Cowboys are a 10 point favorite. Giants short week traveling and they have severe offensive line problems. <laughs> um, feel free to touch on that, John. We kind of touched on it already. And then, can you sell me on any of these Giants receivers? Um, I'm listening. I'm willing to hear you out. The The issue for Saquon Barkley for the Giants is that, uh, if, for those listening that don't know, starting center, John Feliciano, right tackle, Evan Neal, left guard, Shane Lemieux, and backup left guard, Josh Azudu. Ziodu? I don't know. I'm pronouncing <laughs> it incorrectly. Whatever the case, they're all ruled out. Also, Evan Neal's replacement, Tyre Phillips, is a game time call. It doesn't sound hopeful. Like this team is down to the absolute bare bones. Uh, having said that, selling you on a receiver, yes, Darius Slayton is yet again a great play. 
led the Giants in routes run last week on a season-high 86% of dropbacks. He has a 23% target share the last two games out of New York's bye. And then more importantly, uh, Slayton is also eighth among all wide receivers in yards per route run against man coverage, which Dan Quinn schemes because they blitz a lot at the league's fifth highest rate. Uh, we also know Wanda Robinson, which I didn't believe. Like We knew about the Lions' propensity to allow yards to opposing slot receivers, which is why I think Isaiah McKenzie naturally gets steamed, as you mentioned, could be a 15 20% player in a short slate. And I didn't believe it. And then we saw Wanda Robinson at 13 targets before he got injured. But that but, was a game script thing. Like Wanda, yeah. the, 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 it was all like the Giants threw 50 passes. That, yes, uh, season high. <laughs> yes, past tense for Daniel Jones. Um, but then also Darius Slayton still filled in with 10 targets here. So like the fact that there's no one else to play, maybe maybe Richie Jones is active for this game, but Richie James. But either way, like there's just no one else to go to. So I don't understand why Darius Slayton wouldn't be in an amazing play. Literally just like chalk on this slate. And I actually don't think he's going to be chalk. And we we're think we're going to get negative game scripts. So sure, why the hell not play him? And pull up the ownership as I throw at the rich. Your thoughts here as far uh, as it's too hot for this as well. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, go that? ahead. Oh, for the the beanie. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and the takes, but yes, the hot the, the takes. No, no, I don't think I don't think Slayton's hot take at all. I mean, he's the easily been the like the guy that's been the most reliable in their passing game. Uh yeah, I mean, I, I even like when I talked about Wandell like last week, even pre-game, it was like it wasn't like a Wandell thing versus me. It was literally just the Giants construct of the Giants offense thing that's been limiting those guys. It's like they weren't getting any passing volume. So it's like you have a guy that's a low A dot. Uh, player in Wandell Robinson, he needs targets to get there, right? And like the Giants just weren't offense providing. And we talked about Slayton last week. Prior to last week, he had more than seven targets in a game because they just don't throw a lot. Well, they couldn't run the football lick last week. They fall behind. They're chasing script and they threw 44 times. Guess what? Now you look good. We've done this with CD Lamb the entire year. We're starting to see it with Terry McLaurin too and what's going on in Washington. Like you look at these guys, like they have like, these elite like metrics, right? Like you look at CD lamb and you're like, Oh my God, this dude is third in target share. He's sixth in air yard share. He's, he's fourth in targets per out run. Yeah. Well, Dallas is also 24th in dropbacks and they're throwing when you only have 28 targets to go around. It doesn't matter what those metrics look like. You need volume. That's why CD lamb goes absolutely nuclear week before when they have 46 pass attempts. But when we get back to these 25 games, he's just got to do a lot on very little. And it's like kind of said that it's going on with Terry McLaurin now. So if we at least just get passing volume for the Giants side, like these guys can actually get there if there's just pass attempts. And I don't think they're going to be able to really run the football. I mean, maybe you get one, a situation because Barkley and the type of runner he is, like he just pops one. Uh, now out of, like I said, Jamal Williams, those 32 running backs that have 100 more carries this year, Barkley's now 27 out of 32 guys in success rate. When these teams played in week three, he had his success rate per carry was just 28%, but he had a 36 yard touchdown run. That's basically his MO the entire year. We never got there last week because eventually he just didn't get enough carries and they never popped the big run. But if he doesn't pop the big run, there's no receiving game usage for Barkley anymore. Like where, where are all of Barkley receptions? Like that's the big like hang up with him. And that's why he's not cracking that ceiling. even when he gets there, his season high is 45 receiving yards. It did come against Dallas. If you want like that little carrot to like latch onto but, like, the thing is, when you watch Zeke in week one, or uh, Barkley in week one, we're like, oh, my God, this dude's going to catch 80, 90 passes this year. He's going to be like, like, oh, my God, he's going to just knock down all fantasy. It doesn't even matter. Uh, the receive, but the receiving, like, floor hasn't been there at all for him. I'm curious to see if it gets there this week. They're going to need him. Like, so, and this is a must, kind of a must-win game for the Giants. They've only played one division game. Everyone's kind of live in that division. they got to start winning some of these games. Uh, they got to use Barkley in the passing game eventually, right? Like, or, or just no. And we, we didn't even mention uh, Dory Jackson, Fabian Moreau, two starting corners out for the Giants as well. <laughs> like, it's it's a disaster, man. And plus, like, Wink Martindale, like, we touched on it last week. Wink Martindale still blitzes. This man has never seen a snap. He's not going to blitz on. 48% of defensive snaps. The next closest team in the league is at 42%. And CeeDee Lamb leads the league in catches and, and targets and catches against the blitz. Um, he's been, since Dak... Prescott returned in week seven. CeeDee Lamb has been targeted on 28% of Dak's targets against the Blitz. Like, it's just like everything works out too well in this game for the Cowboys. Let's have the Zeke Pollard conversation. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I mean, it's a short slate. Uh, And if if you're looking on FanDuel, 
and here is Zeke Elliott at 71. It's like you know what you're you know what you're fighting for. Like you're basically playing the Jamal Williams of the Cowboys. Yeah. We also expect it to be a blowout. They're also in a game. They're also in a position where like they're giving Zeke touches to make them feel better. Like they're going to give him touches inside <laughs> the 10 yard line. Um, these these two players like. Pollard had a catch inside the 10 yard line, but nonetheless, he out touched Zeke three to two. Uh, they will give Zeke carries inside the five yard line and on the goal line. He had two carries last week for two yards because both of them came literally on the goal line. Like that's his MO, and that's where we catch up in points on FanDuel. So I'll play Zeke on FanDuel. Why the hell not? Not on DraftKings, but I'll definitely play Zeke on FanDuel. And importantly, it came after a fail by Pollard. Yes. Like yeah. they gave Pollard a shot and he failed. Uh, which isn't the running back's fault necessarily. You just get a play blown up, but they went and turned to Zeke. You know, they're like, all right, we'll get the. I, I see a situation very similar to the Green Bay situation, right? Like Tony Pollard is your Aaron Jones. You know, Zeke is your, or, or kind of like an apex Swift, right? If Swift were healthy, it's a lot similar, right? Like in these two back backfields right now, like Pollard is the favorite in the backfield. He's going to be the guy that's going to get the most of the passing game work now. He's the splash play guy. He has a huge ceiling. He also is a little volatile, probably a little more volatile than people are giving him credit for because right. of the streak that he's on right now. Like I said, I mean, the dude's not going to have 100 receiving yards and a 30-yard <laughs> receiving touchdown and a 69-yard receiving touchdown. Uh, two of the three longest receiving touchdowns by a running back in the NFL this season were in that game. So we're not going to have that type of run out uh, every week. Um, but it is a great matchup. Uh, and then – yeah, I mean, they're just not going to probably be pressed to throw, right? Like we've seen this with Kellen Moore the entire season in the Cowboys. Yeah. I mean, look at Dak Prescott's dropbacks, man. Like he he can be efficient on his dropbacks, but he's thrown more than twenty seven passes once since he came back. Like, do you think the Giants are a team like they're going to throw it forty times? Like, are they going to be in a position like we'll play for that? Like, I'm going to have lineups that play for that scenario. Like, I'm definitely going to have. Dak lineups, but like, it, it, do I believe that that's the most probable outcome? Absolutely not. So we've all, it, it was Cooper Rush as well, but we've seen this matchup before, and uh, uh, Wing Martindale blitzed Cooper Rush at the league's highest rate in Week Three. So like, we've already seen this play out. And Dak Prescott, like Dak Prescott, Joe Burrow, and Patrick Mahomes are the three quarterbacks you don't blitz in the league because they make you pay every time. Prescott still fifth in completion rate against the blitz this year, and uh, I guarantee you. Martindale's going to send the house. So yeah, probably a position to stay away if we assume it's a blowout. Also, Rich, like I know you don't play a lot on DraftKings, but like I think we're we're having a different discussion because it's interesting on FanDuel where I want to pay up for him to just get unique. I understand it's not like it's not good value, but I don't give a shit about value on a three game slate. Um, whereas on DraftKings, dude, like Paul was priced at sixty five hundred in Week Eight was the overall RB four with three touchdowns. He was priced at 6,500 against the Packers. And then he obviously, you know, he played 72 snaps, had 25 touches, and scored 25 DraftKings points as the RB6. Last week, then they said, okay, we'll budge him up to 6,600, a whole $100. <laughs> and then we know what he did last week as the RB1 in fantasy. They kept him on a short slate on DraftKings. They kept this guy at 6,600. Like that's offensive to me. So I'm going to play him despite everybody. And I'm just going to roster him in every single tournament because it's too cheap. I don't care how volatile he is. Like, 6,600, that's that's offensive. John, uh, Ronald and Chad, for those that are watching us on YouTube, what's up, y'all? Uh, kindly hit that like button, subscribe, turn on those notifications as well. Uh, he says, I thought Daigle would have been on the doubt, the double Cowboy running back like last Maybe. year. That was you your know what? Call. You know what? Maybe. Uh, I, I played around with it, but I think I like Ronder Stevenson a little bit more, at least on DraftKings, um, than Rich does. And so that's where I'm playing him because they didn't really bump up his salary per his usage. Well, the problem is no one's a, like one of the guys isn't cheap. Like Pollard yes. last year was an ancillary guy, right? Like on a slate. Like yeah. but, now that like this. But if you case. fade, if you fade Ramondre on FanDuel, which it makes sense to, yeah. um, you can get both of these guys since Zeke is now cheap. Like 7,100 for two touchdowns is cheap since that's what we're assuming. Pollard on FanDuel current projection, 25% owned. Zeke, 13% owned. On DK, uh, we got Pollard at 24 and Elliott at 13 uh, for what it's worth there. Uh, Dak, the most popular quarterback, uh, second most popular quarterback behind yeah, yeah. Allen um, yeah, uh, as far as the slate. Is projections. Well. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other guys are all j- Jamokes. That's true too. Yeah, you'll have them. <laughs> I'll have them do probably. <laughs> Why not? Let's see what happens. Yeah, man, absolutely. Do you think I want to live a life where I where like I don't get a piece of the two touchdown Mac Jones game? 
<laughs> three touchdowns. Give them credit. Maybe touchdowns. The more, that's more touchdowns than they've scored in their last three games. I don't know. I, I know. It's not going to be pretty. Rich, do you have an answer? You can abstain if you want. Besides Slayton, like who's the next best option to pair with Daniel Jones? You can include Kager if you, or Hudson if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, vo- volume will just be out there. I assume they're going to be throwing the ball a lot, maybe, maybe comparable to the levels they threw last week. I mean, Slayton gets lucky because if Richie James misses, you know, he'll, he's the guy that's going to go in and move inside. Isaiah Hodgins and Kenny Galley aren't going to play any slot snaps. So, like, he'll, he'll, actually, he'll actually benefit Slayton, too, if, if Richie James misses because, you know, he won't get any of the, the best end of the Cowboys defense either. You know, he's okay. not going to run into Trayvon Diggs. He's not going to – I mean, they're, they play a lot of zone and, and, you know, cover three anyways, but, you know, it just helps him. He's just going to – it, it's just a, a better run out for him. That's why I think, you know, just as is Slayton, and he doesn't project to be real popular, but, you know, you look at – we got guys that are going to be on the field, though. Like, you know, like Michael Gallup hasn't done shit this year, but, like, he's out there. You know, maybe this is the week. Is there a reason why he's not doing anything? Right, did dude, dude had an ACL tear. He, he wasn't good before, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he the Michael Gallup has always been more of a tall tale than like actual production uh, <laughs> in the NFL, and then he's coming off a significant injury. I think he just is approaching ten months too recovered. I think he had surgery in February last year. Is when he had his surgery because it was a double. It was uh, ACL MCL. So I think he had to wait a little bit, uh, and he tore it like in January, anyways. Uh, so, I mean, he still, like, isn't even out. Like, we saw Godwin has been, right? Like, it's taken Godwin a while to, like, look yeah. back like Godwin. It's, I mean, these guys take a while to come back from these injuries, so that could be part of it. Uh, like I said, he also wasn't a guy. He's a lot like Gabe Davis, where, like, he necessarily wasn't a guy that always got open either uh, to begin with. So, and then you take away the the pass value, right? Like, we, we're shrinking the Dallas pie. Like, these guys aren't throwing a lot of passes in general. So, there's a lot. He's out there, though. Like, if Dak throws a touchdown to him and Dak only throws two, like, he's going to matter, right? Like, on the slate. So, you know, no, there's Noah Brown. You know, Noah Brown is another one of those guys, right? Like, he's, like, chipping in just enough every week where on a slate like this you can talk yourself into, like, well, sure. Uh, Noah Brown's getting played on DraftKings this week, too. Definitely. Given his salary. Let's see where we got him currently. I was looking at tight ends. Uh, give me your thought as far as uh, Knox, by the way, is going to be pretty popular. He's pretty cheap. Obviously, 32 teams total for Buffalo is going to do that. Uh, he's uh, And you're going to see two tight ends on this slate for sure because the yes. receivers, people want to play those receivers, man. People are going to want to play these wide receivers. Knox, uh, Hawkinson, and Schultz will be the three most popular. And then you can kind of throw a dart at Henry or Hudson or Janu, and like, you don't feel good about those, obviously. And Cager isn't a tight end on FanDuel. Correct. Oh, uh, he's he's twenty seven hundred, uh, tight end, very cheap on DraftKings, and what we expect to be negative game script. But he's a under five k wide receiver on FanDuel, where she's not playable on FanDuel. Three five Noah Brown projected for seven percent on DK for what it's worth. Gallup at ten. Um, yeah, so ten percent Gallup. See, like that should be a lot because Gallup's playing basically every snap. It just hasn't happened. Like to me, that should be a wider for Gallup, and that not that I'm right. excited to play Gallup, but <laughs> I'm just saying in, in context that like him and Noah Brown shouldn't be that projected closely. Better play than Thielen. Thielen's four nine. You prefer Gallup? No, absolutely Thielen. Okay, yeah, Thielen's grabbing. A little Thielen's more. like fifth in the NFL in route participation, which whatever it's participation trophy, but like he's getting a lot more exercise. I feel like he just. He's just like uh, an afterthought at this point. Just kind of, yeah, he has, well, he's not, he's, he's old yeah. and not very good anymore. And well, TJ Hawkinson now stealing where he got his targets, like someone else to soak up those intermediate targets. What about uh, Schultz? It's got an official Schultz take here, uh, John. Uh, I mean, we know he's, he has a 20% target share in his four full games with Dak Prescott. Uh, it, it, it's a weird tight end slate because you're not scared of anybody. Like I'm not scared of TJ Hawkinson. I'm not scared of Schultz. I'm not scared of Cager. Uh, I'm not scared of Knox. So it's just kind of like, I'm just correlating with my game stack. I don't really have a hard Schultz take to be honest. Rich, you got anything to add or it's just like, it's one of those tight ends in the pool. And if it works as far as your correlation and that's that. I mean, he's the best tight end in the pool. I mean, he, He's getting targeted on 27% of his routes with Dak Prescott in the game. Uh, you know, if you were kind of to play the extrapolation game and compare that to the league, only Mark Andrews is getting targeted at a higher rate than that. Uh, again, you just need pass volume. 
Like Cowboys, like, I mean, these guys that have these like elite metrics, like Lamb and Schultz, like just get dinged. I mean, you, the target share was there for Schultz. Last, you had five, you had five targets. Like, you know, that's, that's a, you know, a quarter, or, you know, a quarter or a fifth of the targets, 20% of the targets they had last week. You got him better than Hawkinson. It's close. I feel like it's kind of like a coin toss. You know? Oh, he's a better, he's, he's, uh, I think he's better in terms of like what he offers to see. Like Hawkinson, like we like the target value, uh, you know, especially on a site like DraftKings and where he's priced, but like, Hawkinson is doing his Hawkinson thing since he joined the Vikings. Like the dude's getting <laughs> five yards per target, nine yards per catch. Uh, you know, I think uh, Schultz definitely offers a little bit more upside. Belichick has also seen Hawkinson once this year, held him to six yards receiving. So like we have that little narrative to play around with as well. Shall we move on to that game? Is there any, any final thoughts? Your favorite tournament play, John, in the Giants Cowboys game? I like Darius Slayton a lot because I, I don't think he's going to be rostered according to what he should be, especially since it's a late swap position with Richie James. If he gets rolled out, where the hell else do you pin these targets? You can't tell me you're going to play Galladay. You're not going to play Isaiah Hodge. Like it's all Darius Slayton, who's a very good player. So I like Slayton a lot. And uh, on FanDuel, I still like Zeke. And I'm going to play Pollard still everywhere as well. Rich? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think looking at projected ownership for Slayton, it just feels like way off. And I think it's just that maybe it's a byproduct of just like, hey, man, people are going to do whatever they can to get at least two of these big wide receivers in their lineup, maybe three if you can. Um, I think that maybe is dictating it. But he's definitely my my favorite giant from objective stance. But I'll sprinkle in a couple of these guys. The least interesting game on the slate, most likely 42 and a half is the total here in New England. In oh, wait, I will say the, the I think one of the biggest leverage points in this in the Cowboys game is Cowboys defense. They're probably they should by bar none be the highest owned defense. They're not going to be because you don't South. think they're, you, you don't think they're going to be. I, I figured no they'd be way. Lost in the no Patriots. way. They're, there's no way they are. I'm looking at everything right now. And you, you're talking about one people love to play pay down at defense and the two cheapest ones are at night. Uh, outside the Lions. So people are lot, Patriots Vikings are by far going to be owned way more than the Cowboys. We have it currently. Okay. Uh Vikings 25%, New England 21, Buffalo 19, yep, Dallas 18. 100%. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I I, I thought Patriots going to be more rostered than Cowboys. I need to change things up then. Okay. Yeah, I would say if you want the one way to get unique in the Cowboys game and and not be as chalky with the like just play just jam Cowboys defense in way higher than projected ownership. Got it. Because people are gonna want to play the cheap defenses and people love to have their defense late. You know, so <laughs> I mean, that was DK. By the way, I ran off for what it's worth. Dallas getting twenty percent on Fanduel uh, at the the full five K. I don't think you go higher than five K on Fanduel no. as far as defense. But that's a way because people aren't gonna like you're talking about. You want to get Justin Jefferson, right? You might need that thousand dollars. You want to get um, Amon Ross St. Brown. You want to get Stephon Diggs. Gabe Davis is more expensive on on Fanduel. Like they're not gonna cut. they are no way they're gonna be as rostered as t- like the Vikings and Bills. New England, Minnesota, forty-two and a half year. Minnesota, two-point favorite versus New England. Uh, Rich, you mentioned him, Justin Jefferson. Of course, you want Justin Jefferson. Uh, how will how you know much you willing to hurt the rest of your lineup to pay off Justin Jefferson? Is he a priority for you? I mean, I think Diggs is just a way better objective play than Justin Jefferson because of just the the top-down situation that the Vikings are in. So the Vikings, I think, are the most interesting team on the slate because Mm -hmm. they're either going to be a disaster or be really good. Like, there's, like, no in-between probably what we're going to get with the Vikings. Uh, You know, a lot of people talk about what the primetime Cousins narrative in play. We're going to have the Cousins versus pressure narrative in play because the Patriots are third in pressure rate. But I don't think there's a team in the NFL that's played a worse quarterback schedule than the Patriots or a worse offensive schedule. I mean, they have placed, they have faced Zach Wilson twice, Sam Ellinger, <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky, Jared Goff, Jacoby Brissett, Aaron Rodgers, and then they face Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields in week one, Tua, and Jackson and Fields aren't necessarily like a passing prowess fantasy guys. Like they have not faced any good passing games outside of the Dolphins, and that was all the way back in week one. Like, so anything with the Patriots could still be taken with a grain of salt to this point. Like, what if their defense just isn't as good as it, like the, the numbers kind of show to this point, and it kind of maybe gets exposed here a little bit. Now, the, we've known for a while, though, the Vikings are nowhere near as good as they, they had been to this point, <laughs> and a lot of people caught to that. Kirk Cousins is having the worst year of his career, and it's been going on for a few weeks. One of the, the, the like more funny tricks of the season, like I brought up, is that Cousins has been playing so bad, and the Vikings have been so good, where inversely he was playing really excellent, and they were mediocre, and he was getting buried for it. 
Uh, career lows uh, across the board, though, touchdown rate, yards for pass attempt, completion rate, like all of those are his lowest rates as a starter. Uh, but to me, they're the most interesting team on the slate because not only the late night hammer, but like if by chance like this Patriots defense just necessarily isn't as good as people believe, like there there could maybe maybe you have like a because the Vikings drop like 30 points at night. You got guys that can put up big numbers in that game. Yeah, I mean, Jefferson and Cook, the two clear and obvious ones. John, if you're going to uh, start with one of those two skill position players in Minnesota, which is it? Is it Cook or is it Jefferson? I think this would be more a position where we go back to Jefferson. Now, it's, it's not shocking to see that with T.J. Hawkinson in the lineup, Jefferson has averaged a 15 A dot. Like, he can't – a lot of – receivers can't get by with just five targets but now that we're moving jefferson further down the field he can't get by with five targets either so we need more than that and under pressure which is what we're worried about here as rich mentioned uh patriots delivering and creating the third highest rate of pressure uh kirk cousins is 34th in the league and completion rate under pressure, disastrous. And more important, the last three games with T.G. Hawkinson on the field, these targets have not been going to Jefferson under pressure. They've now been going 13 targets in particular the past three games to Jefferson, 10 targets to Hawkinson under pressure. So he's spreading the ball out more as well since Hawkinson is closer to the line of scrimmage. But at the same time, you know, we still have Jefferson uh, being a higher ceiling player here, someone we are scared of if everything pops off. So uh, absolutely in a short slate, uh, again, we've talked about this earlier. We're not scared of Hawkinson's targets. I'm scared of Jefferson in a ceiling game. Yeah, that's the one I'm more afraid of uh, of not having for sure. The only counter to that would be is I think the running back pool might be a little bit weaker than the receiving pool. Mm-hmm. So maybe like competition-wise, guys he's competing against, Cook has a better chance to rise above as opposed to Jefferson. But, you know, I, I get all that, what you just said there. Rich, talk and about the, your uh, – like I, I, I reeled off their like quarterback sketch that they faced so far. Like look at the wide receiver ones the Patriots ha- have faced, you know, so far this yeah. year. I mean, the, the, the only dude even in Jefferson's weight class is Tyree Kill, and he had eight catches for 94 yards. I, I mean, if you, if you want to count Waddle, I mean, Waddle had a good game too. But, you know, their, their wide receiver ones that they faced, Deontay Johnson, Rashad Bateman, Alan Lazard, uh, basically Josh Reynolds because it was a half game for <laughs> Amon Ross St. Brown, Amari Cooper who had a touchdown against them, a Darnell Mooney, Garrett Wilson twice, and Michael Pittman. Like, they're just – they're, they haven't faced guys like in this. The one guy was Tyree Kill, and he had a good game against them. So, like I said, there's a lot when you look at the Patriots because we we are. I mean, listen, we're 12 weeks in now. We're looking at a lot of season long stuff, but like still under the hood. Like, I mean, Patriots haven't played anybody, not offensively. Like, really, this, good. this is why. Like, I listen to betting shows and they'll cite the Patriots defense EPA, and, I, and I'm like, doesn't matter. They they've literally played no quarterback whatsoever. Do not care about EPA right now. And it's this like, happened in the last year. Remember the Patriots got hot in the middle of last year and people were like, oh, they're like a threat to win the AFC and do all that stuff. And they play like all these just terrible quarterbacks in a row. And then they got in the playoffs and faced Josh Allen and, and got 40 put up. <laughs> uh, greatest moment of my life is still being in a bar in Stanford, Connecticut, and tweeting about the Patriots game on Thursday Night Football in Week 10 and people saying they should be a first-round pick. The Patriots defense uh, two years ago because they played the easiest schedule of quarterbacks to that point. I think the Patriots defense at that point was averaging 17 and a half fantasy points per game. Like they were demolishing everyone because they basically played Zach Wilson, rookie Josh Allen, or uh, Jared Goff every single week. Now there still is a chance like they could be good. And like, you know, we're not gi- I'm not giving them a credit. I just said they really, they really just haven't. I'm just looking at by based on like, I haven't seen them be challenged. And also like, can the Vikings, like, are they capable of like exploiting a good defense really? Well, I'll give you one better. Uh, are the Patriots explo- are capable of exploiting a good spot? Because no. I already said earlier in the show. Well, guess what, Rich? I'm going to try to sell you on Mac Jones, anyways. Because I'm I'm he's definitely playing Mac- on him. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's played everyone. That doesn't count. He's not in on him. He's done everyone. So tell me. He's, he's not doing anything. Me, I'm not in on it. All right. Well, uh, Mac Jones, 5100 on DraftKings, or more importantly. 6,500 on FanDuel, where we need touchdowns anyways to catch up to Josh Allen and everyone else. And uh, Matt Jones has been good in the red zone. He's completed 71.5% of his passes inside the 20 this year. But uh, he's he's only had 21 passes inside the red zone because the Patriots offense sucks. But but that's where we're hoping the Vikings help us out because uh, the Vikings are still allowing a league-high touchdown rate inside the 20. And over the last month since they returned from their bye, 28 points per game. So wherever I'm spending down, I'm going to 
I'm going to Mac Jones. Uh, I understand Mac Jones checked down. That was the game plan against the Jets last week. 85% completion rate, a season high, because all he did was throw to Ramondre Stevenson in the flats. But on the year, he's still eighth in percentage of his throws, 20 plus yards downfield. And the Vikings are allowing a th- the third highest rate of explosive passes, 15 yards downfield this year. So I think we could get a ceiling game for Mac Jones. Yes. I know he hasn't thrown more than one touchdown pass in any game this year. I understand Josh Allen is on this slate, but at that same point, like if we make it past Josh Allen failing, buddy, we're live. We're going with Mac Jones all the way here. Favorite receiver to pair with Mac Jones, feel free to include the tight ends, is who, John? Uh, okay, so I'm waiting out. the Rich already knows what's coming. That's why he's laughing. I'm waiting out the Devontae Parker injury swap because he's questionable. And we saw Nelson Aguilar run the second most routes for this team last week. And that's important because the boundary receiver is where we're attacking the Vikings. Uh, Minnesota's practically bottom four in every metric. Completion rate, yards per target, uh, yards per game, yards per snap against receivers from the outside. And so, uh, you know, Devontae Parker played behind Nelson Aguilar out of the bye last week. And so that's probably the rotation. But Parker still... You know, yards per route run leads the Patriots uh, against zone coverage. Also leads the Patriots in percentage of targets seen against zone coverage, which the Vikings run the second highest rate of. So if Parker's out, I'll go Nelson Aguilar. Otherwise, I may suck it up and play a cheap Parker. Uh, how about your thoughts there, Rich? Similar thoughts? I guess you guys started this co- had this conversation already. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just know how reason. he thinks. There's a reason Ramondre Stevenson has over 20% of the team targets uh, the past four weeks. And it doesn't really have to do anything with like how great his receiver he is. It has to do with a lot of like what the Patriots have on offense right now uh, mm-hmm. outside of Jacoby Myers. Like there's, there's these other receivers are, are just bombs, man. They, these like, they're just Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Tyquan Thornton, Devontae Parker. They're just, they're just not good. There's a, and there's a reason, like, because targets are earned, right, by good players. And there's a, these guys aren't getting open. They're not getting the football. There's a reason why Jacoby Myers has such a huge target share in games that he plays, and then the rest is just checkdowns, right? Like, these other receivers just aren't very good. Uh, so, I mean, I'm probably not going to play any other Patriots receiver outside of Jacoby Myers, and then we will include uh, Ramondre Stevenson as part of the guys you can play as a, as a as kind of like a run back, you know, with him, uh, probably more on DK than, than so on FanDuel, uh, where you can get kind of cute with Damian Harris. Cause I mean, if, if the Patriots win this game, which definitely is an outside realm possibility either, right? Like it's, this is still a tight total. They're dogs, but it's still a relatively tight total. Uh, you know, the, and they're hanging with the run game on a short week. Damian Harris was the, by far the better runner last week against the Jets. Yeah. So on a short week, do they kind of mix the workload up a little bit? You know, maybe not give Ramondre as many carries. You mix in Damian Harris. We still have no idea, too, like if like Damian Harris is like completely froze out at the goal line. We don't really know that, right? Uh, like he could still be kind of a thorn there. We don't really know. They just haven't had any opportunities. Uh, it's like Daigle said, if, we, if Nick Folk was on this slate, man, we'd just be jamming some Nick Folk. Because uh, <laughs> every time the Patriots get in their head zone, you might as well just they might as well kick on first down. Like Vandal <laughs> 2018 or something, you get a roster. <laughs> which is which is an unfortunate thing to hear when you're really prepared to onslaught the Patriots, which I'm ready to do. Ready yeah, I mean I, I can get with I can get with you know making some Mac Jones teams and like seeing him as like you know if Allen doesn't get there, like there's a uh a place where Mac Jones can easily get to, I think like, you know, 16 to 22 points, like in that area. Uh, and then if you get that where you have a Josh Allen game, where he only has like say 25 and not the 35, like that's, that's live. Cause you're playing a lot of really good players around Mac Jones, but you're saving a salary and the Vikings have had multiple passing touchdowns before their past five games under Ed Don- Donatel. Like we know the structure of the defense. So you're going to get to see a lot of cover four, a lot of cover six. They allow completions. It's the structure of the defense to allow short completions. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of catches, I believe, from like, you know, Ramondre and Jacoby Myers. Uh, but like, I, I just don't see an objective way to play any other guys. Like we don't like you can say maybe Nelson Aguilar because maybe he'll be out there. But like th- there's no like lock that if Parker misses, like he's locked in as the next guy up. They could easily just play Tyquan Thornton like they were for a couple of weeks or play Kendrick Bourne. Uh, the, the, I want to play the guys at least know we're going to be out there. You know, that, that's what makes the rest of the Patriots like such a crapshoot. If you trust our ownership projections, uh, Stevenson versus Harris 
We have Stevenson currently projected as the highest owned running back on DK, 49%. Harris at 10%. Uh, yeah, pe- people over- love, just like we talked about a couple weeks ago, Dean, with Deontay Foreman, people love Stevenson as well, man. They don't, even when he's not the best player among the Patriots running back, they love Stevenson. 42% for Stevenson on Fandle and 12%. And he's a little, you know, he's more expensive. And I just wish Harris like can catch the ball. Like they would throw him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, I guess I would change things as far as the ownership, but that's on a three game slate. Absolutely. Harris can score two touchdowns. Like that can happen. And if he's going to be kind of sort of lost here, uh, I think it's I, I know, just an interesting, interesting thought. Maybe be over on Harris. Maybe a little bit on Fandle, especially it should, you, you might want to be over on Harris. I thought I thought Harris was live last week on FanDuel, like on the main slate for fifty eight hundred. Um, because also remember, like that game he missed before their bye, he was out with an illness. It wasn't an injury, so like he bounced back, averaged over eight yards per carry, was the better runner, as Rich mentioned. And so, sure, we can we can definitely see him getting more carries here as he was outscoring Ramondre Stevenson through the first two months of the year. But if the Patriots go down like fourteen nothing. He's dead. Yeah. It's uh, over. Yeah. Well, our lineups are dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a wrap, man. Yeah. Time to look at the next slate. Well, that's, that's the last yeah. game of the slate. Time to look at the main slate, which we'll touch on. Uh, man, that was a really, really thorough uh, breakdown as far as a three game uh, Thanksgiving slate. Hope y'all enjoyed that out there. Hope you guys want some money on Thanksgiving. Give, give me a final thought, Rich, as far as the slate, maybe something that, you know, maybe your favorite play, your favorite stack, something you want to reiterate. You know, you probably already mentioned it already, but drive the point home. Uh, no, I mean, I think it's just, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun way to, to play. Uh, just be active. That's all I can say. Be active with your lineups, like follow the slate as it moves along. Don't just make a bunch of lineups and watch the games, you know, calibrate as you go with your lineups. Ignore your family is what I heard. Is that, is that what it, yeah, is that I what mean? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> John, you have a final thought? Be prepared to lose. That's all. That's all. Man. Like, <laughs> just, I am. I am so prepared Never to meet Josh prepared. Allen and just call it a day. I'm so prepared. You, you have the whiskey ready at like 12:30 when the Josh mm. Allen fires off first play touchdown. We can't game play. Game. We can't play a 40 percent quarterback. We're done. I'm with telling this. you, it's okay to play Josh Allen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we are fighting. We are fighting on this show. Uh, people are. People are looking at their parents and they're, they're confused right now. <laughs> All right, we're going to touch on the main slate in a second. Before we do so, we want to mention Thrive. Appreciate them for sponsoring the show. Join in on the fantasy prop action this NFL season with Thrive Fantasy. Easy to play. No salary cap style contest revolves around over-under style player props. Each each prop has a fantasy score associated with the prop. The riskier the prop, the higher the fantasy score. Rack up the most points for your share of the prize pool. We have, of course, we wouldn't mention this if we don't have a nice, sweet deposit bonus for you all. Grinders, G-R-I-N-D-E-R-S. Use that deposit, bon- deposit bonus promo code uh, when you sign up for a bonus up to $250 as well as free tickets. Uh, the free tickets as far as how they work. I got that written down over here. Yeah, two free $20 contest tickets if you deposit between $100 and $499. If you're depositing $499, you might as well deposit $500 because you get six free $20 contest tickets uh, with a $500 deposit bonus. Again, promo code GRINDERS, G-R-I-N-D-E-R-S. They're running contests specific just to Thanksgiving. So I figured we'd uh, mess with those props. you got to pick 10 of these 20. Got to pull them up. Uh, Producer Steve will put them on the screen for you guys. Uh, anything pop for you, Rich, as far as uh, something you want to be distinctly over, distinctly under? Uh, and feel free to be ambitious. We want to get as many points as possible. <laughs> Uh, you know, let's see, what are we looking at here? I mean, digs receiving yards and even I'll, I'll, I'll take the over on that for the reasons we talked about, you know, great versus man coverage, no Jeffrey Kuda, kind of a squeaky wheel game for him. He complained about targets the week before I had a season low target share. Uh, so there's that. Uh, what else we got? What about, I mean, listen, Slayton just for a touchdown, it could be any time in the game could be when they're down 30, um, uh, 130 one, points. Yeah. 130 wow. Points? Yeah, we take a shot at that. Uh, what else do we got on the board here? Uh, feel free, Dangle, to to jump jump in here. I am looking. Uh, oh gosh, they're not even giving me credit for the Mac Jones over two touchdowns. They're making me actually lose points for it. So no, <laughs> it's plus uh, interceptions too. Uh, plus interceptions. Yeah, that smash it now. <laughs> He's gonna throw a couple of picks. You're good. But but it's still thirty points less. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah. That's, that's a lot. We're trying to win here. Uh, oh, why don't we go over on Justin Jefferson? Why not? Like mo- That's only a 10-point difference. Uh, we'll bet on the ceiling game here for, as we mentioned, the schedule. I don't mind that. All right. Again, uh, use the promo code GRINDERS, up to $250 deposit bonus at Thrive Fantasy. We can only go so long, so we, I mean, let's just try to be as brief as possible. Yeah, yeah, 52, and really half, 52 and a half rushing yards over Devin Singletary as well. That's a pretty good bet. I'll bet that. I have not really dug in the. I've broken down all the games, obviously, but I've not really like delved into like pricing and stuff for the main slate because I'm just, like I said, I'm still trying to get all my lineups ready for tomorrow. It's Same been a tight week. There's been a lot happening this week. <laughs> it's been a very, very busy week. Very busy week. I, we mentioned at the top, we kind of touched on it. The, the highest total on the main slate, 11 game main slate, is the game in Arizona. Kyler Murray expected to play, or at least on track to play, for what it's worth. Uh, with Herbert on the other side, Chargers at Arizona, 48 and a half. The lowest one, Denver at Charlotte's, 36 and a half. We got Chicago versus the Jets. The Jets getting white as their quarterback out of nowhere, I, I assume. We don't know as far as, um, uh, what's his name, the quarterback for the – Yeah, we don't know. if I, I assume he's going to go at this point, but I'm not really sure why they should push him, but I guess if he plays, I assume he's fine. Uh, you want to just get, like, overarching thoughts, so, like, maybe your favorite uh, – and, John, you know, again – we're focusing mostly on Thanksgiving and tune in later, you know, for, for uh, the sharp football analysis, four for four, the rotor grinders. We'll get more refined thoughts. We do about a to touch on the main slate because that's what we typically do. But John, feel free to you know fire off some of your favorite quarterbacks. The first, uh, on a first look. My first look was to pay up for quarterback. Uh, but then we got, oh, yeah. yeah, but, the, but then we still got, you know, a Rams rushing quarterback out of nowhere, but at the same time, like, I mean, just look through Patrick Mahomes' box scores. What else do you want to know? Uh, 15 and a half point favorites at Arrowhead. And Mahomes now has 300 yards and or three touchdowns in seven consecutive games. Uh, the one area where I started going off the board, because I, I can't do two uh, against the Texans. I have zero faith the Texans push back at all. Um, also, Jeff Wilson's going to be chalk. And I, I genuinely don't feel comfortable going with two of double stacks as leverage against Jeff Wilson especially if Raheem Mostert misses that game, DMP on Wednesday. So early on, it, it's tough, I understand, because Lamar Jackson scored 21, 42, and 40 DraftKings points in his first three starts and hasn't scored more than 18 in his last seven. But this Jaguars defense also the last month has gotten worse. Like, they're last in that span and defensive DVOA at Football Outsiders. So Lamar Jackson's really the only other quarterback I came across in stacks with Demarcus Robinson and Mark Andrews. Otherwise, I got nothing. Rich, help me pay down a quarterback. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, definitely you could. So what's been different this week on the main slate compared to previous weeks from the top-down stances? We don't have like a lot. We haven't had a lot of the cheap running backs the past couple weeks, right? Well, this week is loaded with guys that are like, running backs. That's yeah. And that's the difference the slate. It allows you to just play Mahomes. Uh, don't get I don't, in cash. I don't say you just don't play Mahomes, uh, especially with you because we've got Rashad White on the board, we've got Samaj P. Ryan on the board, we've got Jeff Wilson on the board. There's just a lot of cheaper running backs that you can play this week where we haven't had that in weeks past, and it allows you to kind of fit some guys in. Uh, I can say top down, I'm looking at Seahawks Raiders at being a game I'm definitely excited for. Uh, to kind of circle in and hone in on some guys there to paying up that, that game could definitely, I believe, pop. Uh, from from just looking at that, um, but I haven't really like dove dove in at that point. Some individual players, I don't know if people will get cute and play Latavius Murray, but he's another cheap running back that just is going to be out there. Uh, last man standing, right? Well, I guess yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. Well, we seen last week people were like you know ever excited to go play Kenyon Drake, so I could guess let's not rule out Latavius Murray is going to be like popular, could be popular as well. So I that's how the field has changed, by the way, over the years because there's no way Kenyon Drake would have been whatever he was 30, 35 percent. He was really high. Uh, the higher dollar you went, Drake was even more well owned because people thought they were being sharp. And I, I confess, well, it wasn't I, even just being sharp. It was like I said, the context of the slate. Like there mm-hmm. were no like real salary saving running backs. There haven't been for a couple of weeks. So like people were like, oh my goodness, we can get Kenny Drake in here. Like he, he now I can get uh, another big piece, right? And like, <laughs> to be fair, I, I used him, which we'll show at the end of the show for everyone because again, if they want to leave, no big deal. But I, I used him in our four man contest because I mean, the Ravens still had the second highest team total on the slate. I was like, oh, well, like Kenny Drake had 24 touches the week before. Like, why not? Uh, yeah, that did not go well, by the way. Did not go hey, well. 30, uh, 35% hear, in small field. Tango, did I hear you say like you had no confidence in Houston punching back versus Miami? That's what you said, right? Yeah. Correct. Am okay. I supposed to not think that? 
No, no. I just think I, I agree with you. Like I, I don't have a heck of a lot of confidence in Kyle Allen either. Is doesn't he have a field named after him in Texas A and M? Is that is that the same guy? Different. It's guy. not. It's not his field. Yes, but it's not like named after him. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's be even even though he was he was part of the recruitment class because this is where A and M bottomed out under Kevin Sumlin. They recruited Johnny Manziel, Kyler Murray, Kyle Allen. Yeah, those are the three all together. And someone promised them all starting jobs and only one could win. It was obviously Heisman himself, Manziel, who also drank himself out of the league. But then, never forget Dean, someone the next year started kept Kyle Allen and used Kyler Murray as a third down quarterback. Like a running back, but a quarterback. And that's why didn't he didn't transfer. He transferred to Oklahoma because he was like, I'm Kyler fucking Murray. Why would I ever be a third down quarterback? That makes no sense at all. I didn't know Kyle Allen played at Kyle Allen Field. Like I didn't even know. I had no. I don't follow a lot of college football, so I had no idea. But the, the, the back half of my my question was, um, and I don't think this is wrong thinking. Like I love the Chiefs too. Like if a thirty team total, they're uh, they're 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 favored by more points than uh, the projected points for the team total for the Rams. Well, what <laughs> makes you think the Rams are going to punch back? Is kind of my retort. Uh, like how was Bryce Perkins and uh, A Rob and Sklonarnik, uh like well, these guys, are, it, well, the Chiefs are like the Bills, right? It's not, it's not one of these situations like I've been at the Eagles this year, where like the Eagles go up and then they just run every play in the second half. Like, they're like the Chiefs are probably going to still score thirty. Like, they're not just going to like get to twenty and be like, ah, we're we're good. Like, it doesn't matter who they play, right? Like, they're still going to do what they do. Uh, the other thing too is that the Rams actually like legitimately still have like been putting up a fight against the run. Like, they're still stopping the run pretty well. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We're, we're also going to see running backs, too. I didn't mention it. Antonio Gibson, I think, is going to get really steamed by the end of the week. And we've already seen the Michael Carter stuff from people. Like, the Mike White, Michael Carter yeah. stuff. So, like, M- Michael Carter is another right? guy. That's thing, supposedly. What's that? Dump off passes is supposedly a thing. Yeah, yeah. Even though Mike White had 130 dropbacks and he, it was with Jamison Crowder and Keelan Cole as wide receivers. Like, we're just going to cite those. Like, it's cool. Uh, And also, like, People are going to pay down for Kyron Williams, 100%. Without Daryl Henderson, um, a, again, a double-digit game script here, we expect. Kyron Williams ran 24 routes to Cam Akers 7 last week. Like, Kyron Williams the pass catching back on DraftKings, at least, at under 4K. Like, we never get that player. I believe it's 3,900. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's 4,900. 4,9. 4, 9. 4, okay. Yeah, yeah, under 5K, which we never get as well. There ain't um, no dump offs from my guy Bryce, man. Dude, he's gonna be rostered. He's hundred percent gonna be rostered. It depends how like how much value opens up or not. I think yeah. that's but like yeah, he's gonna be in people's pool right now. We'll see. Stay tuned. Pacheco on the other side is only six hundred bucks more. Um, and Ceh went on IR. You yeah. got supposedly Ronald Jones might get some run as well. Um, McKinnon's there. He'll dress. Yeah, but I mean, Pacheco is the first guy we want, I guess, on, on that Kansas City team. Yeah, it's just tough Pacheco's, because he's oh, go not going to catch any passes, and they they're the pass heaviest team inside the ten yard. That's line, why he's so kind just... of like the worst DraftKings player, at too. Yeah. But we talked about the red zone. It blew my mind. I was watching red zone last last week. David Johnson is still in the league. Like, he just God. they just signed him. They just they just signed him. I had no. I mean, I'm like, wait, that's not the David. Johnson. That's a common name. That's another guy who, who went to like I don't know Wichita State or something. <laughs> that's the same guy. Uh, yeah. yeah, good for him. Uh, well, welcome back. I mean, he, he won so many tournaments for so many people back in, you know, 2016, oh, yeah. 2017, whatever it was, probably not that long ago. Pair him with like Le'Veon Bell on Pittsburgh. Um, as far as running back, uh, you know, popping here, Elliot looks awesome in that game against Arizona on the turf. Like for sure, he looks like a strong play. Walker looks too cheap versus Vegas at 6'9. That looks like a pretty good price. Some would say nice. CMC versus New Orleans, uh, you know, Positive game script there as well. Who do you see on first look, uh, Rich, as far as some running backs that are popping off for you? I thought we already did all those. We talked about like 30 running backs already. Did we really? Oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't officially turn the court running back. Yeah, okay, fair enough. You got anybody else, John? As um, as back, you want to hit receiver? Uh, you, you hit on Ken Walker, who was literally a bell cow uh, before in Munich before the Seattle – for the Seahawks went on by. Also, though, like – before that game, the Cardinals game on Monday night, it's a short week, I know. They're coming from Mexico City. They're back at home. They're indoors. Before, like, that game became a blowout, James Conner out-touched Keontae Ingram 16-1. to So, like, the, basically the last two games when James Conner was on the field, 
Uh, Keontae Ingram has had two touches. James Conner has had the rest of them among all their running backs. So if you think the Cardinals hang around against the Chargers, which maybe they can, um, that uh, Car- Chargers still allowing a league high in rushing yards per game. James Conner is still a, a good play, especially on FanDuel because we're chasing touchdowns. Rich, give me a couple of receivers. I listen. You should just find a way to pay for Devontae Adams every week at this point. <laughs> like, just find a way. Like the numbers, yeah. the numbers this dude is are, are, is putting up are just like absolutely bonkers. They're road dogs. Just find a way. Do it. Do what you can. Uh, do what you can to put him in. I mean, his his app. His if you just if you and yeah, I said we we don't have the luxury of like if we played some of him the week that he had the flu game. But look at every game he's had outside of that flu game, like over like the past eight weeks. Like, like, look at the look at the box scores this dude has. Yeah, and he's just getting absolutely jammed with targets. Like the last three weeks, he's almost had a forty percent target share. Like every week, he's over thirty five percent every game. Uh, they're, I mean, just find a way to play him. There's find no way. receivers left really. Him and Mac Hollins, and then like Foster Moreau is like. There's nobody else. Keelan Cole, I, I think he's doing the exercising deal right, but mm-hmm. they're not really throwing him the football. Um. But Keenan Allen, by the way, looks like a pretty good price, assuming he's like, you know, gonna get a full allotment or close to a full allotment at 6-1. Feels a little bit too cheap for historically where it'd be priced at. Uh good matchup there against Arizona as well. Uh what do you have, John? Give me give me a receiver or two before we can have some fun. I think uh Terry McClellan will probably get steamed on DraftKings in particular. He's only fifty eight hundred, I believe, and he has a twenty nine point one percent target share in the last five games from Taylor Heineke. He's basically baby Devontae Adams. Like, they're not as accurate as the targets are from David Carr. He's C.D. Lamb because they're not throwing. Yeah. Uh, They're not as accurate from from Taylor Heineke, but he's still out there getting all the targets. That's fine. Uh, T. Higgins returned from his bye, clearly at full strength, the season-high 33% target share. And then now we get a Titans defense that, like, are are allowing a league-high in yards per attempt against boundary receivers. Like So, although I do think that game's going to be lower scoring, because it's Joe Burrow against four pass rushers, basically. That's how the Titans are getting there. I still like T. Higgins, too. And then Greg Dortch what about, will probably uh, be- No, not to cut you off, but what about uh, Chase is supposed to come back this week, according to uh, – I think I think he, he, Burrow himself said he expects Chase to play. So how does that affect uh, T. Higgins? I actually like Tony Pollard last week. I think I'd still play Higgins even more, honestly, okay. because I don't, I don't think Chase is going to be a full player this week at all. Not even close. Fair personally. enough. All right, close it uh, up. And then, and then Greg Dortch is going to be chalk if if he plays. He's thirty one hundred on DraftKings. Everyone's going to play him. He's also dealing with something. Uh, he's questionable. I can't. He has thumb. Else. He's questionable. They said he's day to day, which gives him a little more hope here. Uh, Marquise Brown also coming back. Okay, well I'll play. I'll play Greg Dortch no matter what if he plays. That's fine. I heard pitch count on. on yeah, but again, this is Wednesday night. We'll see. But like, stay tuned. I don't even know what Brown is priced at, and he only needs to you know, like two plays or maybe one player to get there. Right. He can get loose for sure. All right. Uh, do we want to mention tight I see Ronald in chat said, uh, enough of Moreau talk. I'm sick of him. I mentioned his name in passing. I didn't say he's a great player. I just he had, he had a 33-yard catch. Does that help? <laughs> I, I acknowledge Moreau's existence. Uh, Travis Kelsey back in the main slate, you know, just crushed everybody's soul if he didn't play him in the showdown slate. He got there three times in the end zone. Andrews Man. came back last week, which was nice. Uh, matchup against Jackson last week. We we're supposed to not talk tight ends last, but – Anybody have a tight end take, or shall we just talk movies? How do you play the, uh, Rich Selma on someone besides Kelsey? How do you play someone besides Kelsey? Like, he just ends worlds. Salary. And like, yeah, salary is really it. I mean, last, that's really last week. That's, that's really it. Last week <laughs> was the perfect Taysom Hill week, and I played I played Taysom Hill against y'all in the four-man because it was like it matched up so perfectly with no one else to play at 6K. But now he's 6,500. You have to pay less than 2K more for Travis Kelsey. I can't get away with that anymore. I know you guys lashed out at me. You guys hate snap count stuff. But I think I saw a note where uh, Taysom was in the field like 60% yeah. of the time last week or something like that. Is I, think, that the number? I think it was like 45 or something, right? He, um, season high, though, right? I have it. I have season it. It high. Season high. In, in the first half, he intermittently changed his quarterback 42%. As well. And more importantly, Kyle Pitts at 5,500 to the chalk. Uh, score two points fewer than Taysom Hill. So, like, you were you were, you were awesome. Uh, you know, Stephon, but last week, again, Stephon Diggs was in winning tournament lives. He scored 12 points at 30% ownership because every team sucked. That's why. Uh, Taysom unplayable on DK where he's a quarterback, but he's interesting yeah, for Vandal. Yeah, yeah. is, is he somebody where – but now the, 
opportunity cost is greater when Kelsey and Andrews are on the main slate. Just yeah, no, nah, not on. If he was on DraftKings, we'd have a discussion, but not on FanDuel. You just got to play Kelsey. You just have to suck it up. Um. All right. Anything else? We're talking some movies. Titans not fun, Dean. I'm sorry. Uh, we're we are we are supposed to be here helping you out. Titans not fun at all. Yeah, I, I apologize for running late, but we did want to touch on our movie deal. We want to bring in produce, producer Steve. Producer Steve has a – and if that, that's it for football talk. If you guys, you know, that's all you want for football, you don't like some fun. You got nothing to do. You're here at, a nine, you're here at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. You have nothing to do. Hang around for movie talk. <laughs> I assigned you guys a movie. I won our contest. We're going we're gonna to run it back again this week. Uh, we were playing on Fandle, and uh, uh, well, I, got to, I got you guys to watch The Cooler. Uh, William H. Macy, Alec Baldwin, Maria Bello. I'm sure I'm missing somebody. Uh, Rich, what was your take as far as the cooler? Did you enjoy this movie? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was, you know, kind of like a, an adult fairy tale, kind of, in a sense, you know, where, you know, you had to buy in, like, as luck as an actual character. Uh, I think if people took, it, like, a lot of the stuff that it was trying to sell literally, you maybe, like, in the second act of that movie would have maybe got turned off, like, where, like, it, you know, actually William H. Macy has powers of luck. <laughs> but uh, I did. I enjoyed the performances a lot more. I like. I like the performances a lot more. I thought Alec Baldwin was was bringing heat uh, in it, and then you always get you know really good William H Basie. But Maria Bello, I thought was the the star of the show. Man, she. I thought she was the the best character in the movie. There you I go. Thought, I was I was slightly disappointed because I I it, I thought it was too happy of an ending. Like I, I've watched enough Requiem for a Dream, um, <laughs> uh, other other poor endings in my days where I really started expecting William H. Macy to die. And so I was like, okay, I'm oh, preparing for the worst. Are spoiler free. I, I mean, since 20 years, I think the, the statue is... <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 yeah. we're an hour and a half into the pick six on a Thursday, Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> Fuck them. They, you, all, you all can listen and be spoiled. Tell them exactly what happened. I, the last I think year. you get like three or four years and then spoilers are coming. Yeah. <laughs> Not 20 years. Uh, no, I, I just, I just, so I started expecting a sad ending. I was like, okay, I'm prepared for that. No big deal. But then they, they lived happily ever after. And I was like, oh, that sucks. So I don't know. I think I just painted the wrong picture for the ending of the movie. Could you went for a more like a depressing ending and then we're weckering for a dream? Like that's, that's where you had to go. That's, that's the bar is set. It's Cor- Cormac McCarthy is my favorite Arthur, uh, author as well, just in case you didn't know. And all of his movies, except The Road, which is the only one Oprah latched onto and made it her own. Um, also end in evil winning out. So I just expected that. I expected uh, Anton Chigurh to walk away. I expected William H. Macy to die. I just That's what I wanted at the end. It didn't happen. Yeah, it was a bit of a curve, but you couldn't really predict what happened there at the end, I don't think. That's uh, good, though. The old, the old switcher of the 180. Did, Steve, did you get a chance, Steve, to watch the movie or no? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I for love the contest, that was, you better when have. You guys, when you guys were talking that it was William H. Macy before, I, I didn't know who that was because I'm – I guess a little bit younger. And then I put it on. I go, Oh, it's Frank from shameless. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a so, Fargo, if you know Fargo, but yeah, yeah. Frank, or wild, so, you're a big wild hogs fan. <laughs> oh no, not. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen wild dogs, but <laughs> you're, you're good. Oh, it was good. The, uh, the first four seasons of shameless, by the way, I think that's what it is. The first four seasons, amazing. And then I think after she owns the washer dryer area, that's when it gets a little lame. But oh. and to that point, when she buys her own business, that show is incredible. It's a wild show. They, they have like uh, storylines that could last like a year and a half that are like started and done in like two episodes. Like you yeah. could have really stretched that out. Yeah. Great it's, show though. Great it's, show. It, you ever watch? It was based on a, a British show. There's a British show. Uh, basically, they just stole the other uh, premise. But uh, you ever watch this, Rich? Uh, Shameless from uh, Showtime. Yeah, I checked out like I think season three is when I kind of failed. Time. Yep. Uh, where it got a little cyclical for me. It kind of was spinning its wheels, characterized. But uh, I always said that thought like uh, I've almost gone back to it a few times as like the workout show, like when I'm on the bike. Like, <laughs> every, like you have to start this and give it like finish it. But uh, Which, I, I, I haven't done it. By the way, Rich, like I don't know if you want to announce it, but like I, f- I feel like you accomplished something big. You should tell everyone we're here with friends right now. How did you accomplish? Uh, I, I hit uh, today. I hit uh, fifty pounds. I lost fifty pounds since March. Fuck oh it. no, shit! That's awesome, man. Congratulations! Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so a big deal. We're making we're making moves. Let's go. But you mentioned Shameless, uh, the lip lip on Shameless, the bear. Watch. The oh, bear. that yeah, the bear is awesome. On based, on, uh, based on in FX. Chicago as well. I yes, mean. yes. That's it's the like a one really where he's the cook, the chef. Yeah, yeah. There's a great uh, Warner episode in that a one shot that uh, is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, when they make get, you never want to work in the food industry. 
But if you ever did, you get flashbacks for when you did. Uh, I worked at a Bob Evans for a month, and it was the most miserable experience I had when I was like younger. I was like, I knew I was like, I'm not <laughs> meant to like work for anything associated with food. Bob were you Evans. a wine cook or were you a waiter? What were you with Bob? No, Evans? I was uh, like a busboy and like worked in the back, like you know, like clean up like dishes and stuff. I was like, this is just absolutely the the amount of work people do at restaurants and for the amount of pay they do is like absolutely ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Be, be like, absolutely waiters ludicrous. Yeah, not that you shouldn't you have to be told that, but yeah. That to me, by the way, is a big tell, a big tell on like the person. If you got how people treat people in the service yeah. industry, it's a huge tell for me. Dude, so, those people are like, I mean, you are working. You are working for like not a lot of return. Yes. Um, well, Steve, we, we uh, the suspense so, is, is killing me, killing us. Uh, what, what are you going to force us to watch? The bar has been set. So... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to again something just silly, stupid, funny, nothing like I, it shouldn't be that bad to watch. Three choices. So my first thought was the movie This Is the End. I don't seen know it. if you've seen it. Oh, Dean, I feel like Dean's gonna have seen all of them. All those guys, I, right? Yeah, it's a whole crew. Yeah, James This Franco. Is the End was one. Um, pop star, another Keeps silly one. Popping Adam Sandberg. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andy Sandberg. Andy Sandberg, yeah. <laughs> and the last choice, uh, what was it? Um, it was another. Oh, the interview. Yeah, That's another what's... Seth Rogen movie. Yeah. Where they go, Kim Jong Un. Yep. So yeah, you're going, you're going more the comedy route. <laughs> yeah, definitely something that should that should be like fun to watch over the weekend. Get some laughs. I've seen all three of these. I'm happy to mm-hmm. yield to you guys. I will watch again, though. I have also seen all three. I tell you, I've only seen the interview once. So maybe going back to that would be fun. I actually just rewatched Pop Stars. It just went on HBO Max. And yes. I, and I had it. I threw it on the background when I was working one day. You could, that's a movie you can listen to and not go to watch. Uh, yeah. So I just had rewatched that recently. Um, this is the end is, is awesome. I, I remember seeing it in the theaters when it came out. I love it. So I have much. only seen this is the end. I have not seen the other two, but it sounds like the interview kind of works out best for everybody. I wonder if it holds up. I want to go back. I think that's the most interesting choice because I've only seen it once. And I wonder if it holds up because when it came out at the time, it was almost, it had like almost like a topical feel to it. It was banned. Wasn't it like either ba- like some speakers <laughs> wouldn't play it. And I think yeah. it was around the time there was like a Sony hack. I think the Sony hack was around the interview too. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like and I can't remember how close that was to Franco's cancellation or not. It was before, I believe it was before, but, uh, but I also think uh, in this conversation, like, you know, if you like, then you'll love, if you like all those movies, I don't know if you've seen this movie before, uh, Steve, but walk hard. You will like walk hard if you like all those movies. The Dewey I Cox don't think story. I have, but it's John C. Riley. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's. Fa- have you guys seen Walk Hard? Have yeah. you seen Walk Hard? Yes. Can you vouch that it's a fun movie? It's an yeah. underrated movie. It's fun, especially as someone who like worships Walk the Line. Yeah, Walk Hard's great. Wrong kid died. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so we're we're gonna see the interview. Is that what we're gonna see? That I works. The, yeah. the interview sounds good. And Steve, if you want to pop up, I have our I have your screenshot uh, of your winning lineup. You might as well show it off since you beat three people who either do it for a side job or play professionally. You kicked our asses with your lineup on the right. So, and it was all yeah. he had. He had all one PM players. Like I thought for sure. I was like, oh, Steve's like I'm gonna run him down. I was like, oh, I'm gonna run him down easy. I saw Jahan Dawson. I was like, I'm gonna run him down. No big deal. And no, he fucking kicked our ass because every team sucked. That's again. That was yeah. the moral of the slate. Was that it was a GPP bro week. The chalk died. It definitely was. I, I tend to feel like most of my lineups are GPP lineups. Mm-hmm. I like in those, the four man's playing more like a, like I just been playing stacks and stuff in those and just trying to see. Like, yeah. I think I had Mixon. Mi- dude, Mixon cost me so much money last week. And, and then Samaj Piran on his three touchdowns, like the ultimate, like kick in the pants. Yeah. Crazy. But we didn't mention him, I guess, but like if Mixon doesn't play, we did I mention him. Right. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> So I missed the whole joke of I guess I was reading the chat. I'm not worried sure what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. We ran down all of those running backs. Listen, I'll tell you what, too. If Leonard Fournette ends up missing this game, or they really, because they already come out today, and he's kind of like, oh my goodness, dude, he's going to get pumped so bad. He's like, I, really I think he's five. Not great. I think he's five three on DraftKings. Yeah, it's not, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Yeah. Uh, five, no, no, five one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and Cleveland's rush defense, good or bad? Bad. It's bad. Um, it's, uh, yeah, as far as everyone's concerned, it's bad. Um, let's yeah, start let's telling talk. people it's good. Let's just I, uh, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> I talked about Kyrie Williams at 4,900 only because we needed a value. We're not going to need a value. All right. Right on, right on, right on. In the chat, if you guys are still with us, the, not the actual live chat, but like, you know, the comment section chat. Throw out suggestions which week we should, we should consider for um, watching as far as movies going forward. I got to win one of these. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're you're, uh, you're next. You're next up. One of you guys, uh, John or Rich. Um, well, we do appreciate you all hanging with us. This I hear week. I hear Deep Blue Sea has a third movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm picking. <laughs> Sam Jackson. We may not be able to rent that one anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> that one might be hard to find. Got a, there's a red box, I think, at Walmart. You may have it. <laughs> um, gonna find some flea market. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't tell the people. They know, but tell the people. Where, where can they find you around the interwebs? 44.com. And more importantly, we have a cyber cell going on from right now, the time you're listening, until Cyber Monday. And that is... I think the number they created was like 89% off, something like that. I don't know. All I know is like you could get redraft for $9 for the rest of the year. And that allows you access to the discord where I hang around and I talk about DFS and everything too. So just go to the site for four.com slash plans and everything's there. The discounts there waiting for you through Monday. Rich. Uh, by now, you know, Lord Reeves on Twitter, sharp football analysis, uh, Big, our big thing like going on right now is that uh, you can do weekly packages and the first week that you sign up for is a dollar. And if you feel like canceling, just keep signing up for a dollar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Rotor Runners, by the way, has a, uh, a Black Friday sale. I saw 25 bucks off whatever package you want to get there. So feel free to check that out. Uh, thank you for sticking with us this long. We do appreciate it. Uh, enjoy I got to be so bad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just walked off the show and pissed earlier. You <laughs> Enjoy. You yeah, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Yes. And we'll, we'll, we'll give our Thanksgiving takes next week, I'm sure. We got to hold those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stay safe. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the football. On behalf of our sponsor, Thrive, uh, producer Steve, John, and Rich, and Rotor Grinders, and Toboggans, and Beanies, and Dressing. Uh, this was the <laughs> NFL Pick Six Show, Week 12. I was Dean. Thanks for listening. Good luck. We're out of here. Holler.